An interesting fact that is unique to this medication compared to other antidepressants is that it has the potential to cause a false positive MDMA or ecstasy result on a urine drug screen. So make sure to be mindful of this if you have to go give a urine sample for whatever reason. Welcome back, Straight Talkers. Today I'm going to talk about the medication Trazodone so that you can be better informed when deciding whether or not to start this medication. So Trazodone was first approved for medical use in the United States in 1981. And by 2018, it was the 31st most commonly prescribed medication in the United States, with more than 22 million prescriptions. It's believed that Trazodone increases the amount of the neurotransmitter serotonin in certain parts of the brain. In adults, Trazodone is FDA approved for the treatment of major depressive disorder, and it doesn't have FDA approval for the use in children. With that being said though, this medication is rarely used anymore for the treatment of depression. It has a risk of oversedation and blood pressure fluctuations at therapeutic doses. So instead, we mostly use it off-label, uh, mainly to help people fall asleep at night, and it's a popular sleep aid because of its non-addictive properties. Other off-label uses include the treatment of anxiety, irritability, aggression, and chronic headaches. Trazodone comes in tablet formulation, and depending on what it's being used for, dosing typically ranges from 50 to 600 milligrams daily. When it's used to treat insomnia in particular, the dosing is typically, though, around like the 50 to 200 milligram daily range. And most people will take this medication around an hour or so before bedtime, so they give it time to kick in. And if trazodone is being used to treat anxiety or agitation, it's often taken multiple times per day on a scheduled rather than on an as-needed basis. And if I'm using this medication in kids, I'll often start at a lower dose to help reduce the risk of potential side effects, meaning that we start at a low dose and increase the dose gradually and slowly over time with the goal of finding the lowest effective dose. Once the medication is started, it usually takes a couple weeks before you start noticing a difference, and in many people, it'll take a whole one to two months before it reaches its full effect at the prescribed dose. And because of this delay, I often recommend starting therapy during this time because the benefits of therapy can be seen right away. So the common but usually more mild side effects of trazodone can include things such as edema, blurred vision, constipation or diarrhea, dry mouth, syncope, confusion, dizziness, drowsiness, fatigue, headaches, nervousness, nausea, muscle aches or pains, tremors, sinus infections, or weight gain or weight loss. With that being said, and despite this list sounding pretty lengthy, this medication is thought to have fewer side effects and less weight gain compared to other serotonergic medications. Something that is unique to trazodone is its potential to cause priapism in males. And priapism is when an erection lasts more than one hour, and it's estimated that this occurs in one out of 8,000 men. And given its potential to be painful and cause permanent damage, it's recommended that you go to the emergency room right away if you experience this. Other more serious but less common side effects could include increased suicidal thoughts or actions in those under the age of 25 years old serotonin syndrome, cardiac arrhythmias, orthostatic hypotension, and syncope, increased chances of bleeding, manic episodes, and angle closure glaucoma. Symptoms from abruptly stopping the medication can include things such as nausea, sweating, dysphoric mood, irritability, agitation, dizziness, sensory disturbances, tremor, anxiety, confusion, headaches, lethargy, emotional lability, insomnia, hypomania, tinnitus, and seizures. So please make sure to let your physician know if these symptoms start to occur when you try to come off of the medication, because there are different approaches that we can take to reduce these unwanted effects. Now head on over to the next video to find out more ways to live your best life.